Let's try it again with a different problem. This time, let's track a position on the screen. Now, a position will be some far way across the screen and some way down the screen. That doesn't fit nicely into a single number. Instead, what we want is two numbers. To put two numbers together in a position, we're going to define our own type, our posin type. That's with a capital P posin. And it'll have a single variant, which is a lowercase p. And that variant has two fields, an x and a y, both of which are of type number. So if we're going to write a function flip that's going to flip a uh, position across the diagonal here, then that will take a posin and return a posin. So again, our representation step for, uh, for this particular problem, we decided that we needed to have a posin data type, and so we wrote a new define type down in plate. Now that we have our representation, we can go on to the next step, which is examples. And because it's an example for the flip function, uh, that means that it has to start open paren test, open paren flip. And we've left some space for the argument to flip and the predicted result. When we write an argument for flip, what does flip take? It takes a posin. How do we get a posin? Well, we have one choice, which is this posin variant here. So we need to write open paren posin here, and then we have to pick an x and a y, that is pick two numbers. So I write open paren posin, and I picked 1 and 17. What should we get back if we, uh, if we pass posin 117 to flip? To flip over the diagonal, you just uh, reverse the y and x argument, um, y and x fields of a posin. So that will give us posin 17, 1. And then we can write some more examples following the same process. So here's flip posin minus 3, 4 should give us 4 minus 3. That was our example step. There are no interesting boundary conditions to, to consider in this case, since we're just swapping the x and y fields. Now we can look at the template. Remember that the template sets up the flip function, declaring that it uh, takes a p, which is a posin, and then it looks at the things that are available in the body of the function. We could just write p here, but in fact we have more specific information than just p. We have an x field and a y field in p. So we would write those down in our template to remind us that those are the parts that we have to work with. Actually, we're not going to write it this way. Uh, whenever we have our own type with define type, we're going to use a type case to dispatch on the argument that comes in. So it's a little more work to write down here in this simple flip case, but it's going to be simpler, more convenient, and more general in the long run. So again, in our template, because we have p, which is a posin, and because we defined posin to have these variants with these fields, then we're going to use a type case posin in the body of the function, but also in the template step here to remind us that that means we have a posin with an x and a y that we can work with. So let's write it that way. That's our template. We're ready to proceed to the body step. As always, we look back at our examples. We had two examples of flip, and we see how to put them together. So flip takes p. In this first example, p stands for posin 117. That means that x stands for 1 and y stands for 17. So how do we get the result that we want? Posin 17, 1. Well, we want the y and the x in the opposite order here, and we want to wrap a open paren posin around that. So that, according to our first example, is how we would implement this function. We can double check that it works in the other case, where x is minus 3, y is 4, and what we get out is 4 minus 3 wrapped in posin. So that should work fine. For our last step, the test step, we would run this, and those examples should pass.